friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for another frequently asked question. And this is about, can I make vinegar from dried fruit, herbs, or whatever? And the answer is simply, yes and i'm going to be doing that today now this isn't something i do often i think i've only done it once before just to prove that it could be done but it was in a this and that video which who knows which video that was in over the past five years so this one's going to be dedicated specifically to making a vinegar out of dried fruits herbs or even vegetables if you would prefer so the options you have are pretty much unlimited when it comes to vinegar making and i even did a video on what can you make vinegar from can i make vinegar from this or that or the other thing and as long as it's edible yes you can let me just throw out a few ideas for dry things that you can use in vinegar. One of the reasons I get asked this question a lot is because I like to make floral vinegars and I usually do that in the summertime when all my flowers are coming in fresh and one of my ones I make the most is my rose vinegar. However, you know, a lot of people might come in the video late or maybe they don't grow these things and so they like to buy the dehydrated product. So right here I have dried rose petals. Can I use these to make vinegar? Absolutely, yes you can. Same thing goes with lavender flowers or lavender and rose or lavender, rose, and calendula because these are really great things to use for your skin and hair so a lot of people know that i use a vinegar rinse every time i wash my hair sometimes i've even gone weeks using only vinegar to just clean and condition my hair with so uh, a floral vinegar specifically something with marshmallow in it as well can be very conditioning for your hair and also leave a nice scent especially if the flowers you're using like lavender in particular has a strong scent lavender is not only really great for hair growth but it can have a nice smell to it in the finishing product once your hair dries it doesn't smell like vinegar or it shouldn't anyway. And here are some other ex examples of some other herbs you could use. Uh, honeysuckle, dandelion flowers, red clover. And then here are some other herbs you might want to use if you're wanting to make either a, a good cleaning vinegar that's disinfectant or something that would taste good in making your salad dressings, whether it be an Italian dressing or whatever it is where you're going to add vinegar. And that would be something like sage or oregano or even thyme. And again, just some examples. I use peppermint quite a bit or mojito mint. Like right here, I mean, this might be fresh mojito mint, but even if you used it dried, you can use mojito mint and banana peel like I have here because uh, I don't know if peppermint and banana peel will have, have the same flavor, but when I mix banana peels with mojito mint the finishing result on the vinegar ends up tasting like like that concentrated lemon juice you buy in the bottles at the store that's what it ends up tasting and smelling like so it's perfect for using and making salsas but you can also use dried things like uh i hear i have some grapefruit peels i thought about making vinegar from that i have dried zucchini or dried rhubarb which is what i'm going to do today because this rhubarb you can tell the color is kind of not as bright as some of my uh, rhubarb that i've dehydrated in the last couple of years because this is from 2013. it's some of the very first rhubarb i ever dried and never ended up using it so that's why i'm going to use this is to get it used up and show that yes indeed you can make vinegar out of dried goods now i know some people are going to ask what about frozen frozen should work for some reason whenever i try to make vinegar though out of frozen goods it it just doesn't turn out right it usually never finishes even if it gets started so i recommend if you, when in doubt just consider adding a fermentation starter now if you're interested in the fermentation starter that i make i make it out of anything just like vinegar i'll go ahead and put a video down below that's pretty uh, co comprehensive on how to make it, how to use it, how to refresh it. So you can look into that. Now I've never used a fermentation starter, at least not that I remember in any of my vinegars, but if I was ever to use frozen fruits, I would then add the fermentation starter to make sure it gets going. I don't know what the deal is or if it's just coincidence and or it only happens to me, but I never have problem getting dried things to ferment. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this jar. Now, even though this is a pint jar and this is a half gallon, uh, this is gonna be a lot of rhubarb. 
I'm going to go ahead and pour the whole thing in there though. So by the time the rhubarb, you can see how much space it's taking up. By the time the rhubarb sits in the water for at least a day, two, or maybe even three, that rhubarb should probably be up to here. It'll take up a lot of space in here, but that's good because if I, I've made vinegar out of fresh rhubarb before, and usually when I pack my jars, if it's something more condensed and heavy like that, I'll go anywhere from, depending on how much it, uh, air space it takes up, I may put this much up to a quart of like raisins you could go with this much because they're already high in sugar anyway or something like rhubarb i would probably put the fresh rhubarb about right to here other items like herbs loose herbs like mints i'll fill it all the way up like that because there's usually a lot of air space in there so since rhubarb doesn't have any sugar in it or very little anyway we're going to add at least a half cup to this. Now, this is, again, this is a half gallon jar. So anytime you're making a vinegar out of something that does not have, that has very little to no sugar in it, you know, like, let's say you're going to make an oregano garlic vinegar. I've done that before for the sake of my chickens for putting in their water, but it would also make a great salad dressing vinegar. Um, those ones I'm always going to add more sugar to because your vinegar needs sugar to feed on. So I'm going to start off with a half cup. Sometimes in these vinegars, if they're lower in sugar, I might end up adding maybe another quarter cup to the, uh, that's actually a little more than a half cup, but I'll end up adding maybe another quarter cup later on down the road after it's been very bubbly for a little while, but, uh, never past the two week mark. In fact, I usually say if you're going to, same thing goes with wine making. If you're going to add more sugar to increase the acidity or the alcohol content of it, I say right about the one week mark after it's been very active for two, three days. That's a good time to add more sugar. So you see, I just poured it in the jar like that. And now all I got to do is top this off with water. The water you use is very important. If you're on city water, you don't want to use that straight from your faucet. You need to dechlorinate all city water, even if they don't fluoridate, they do chlorinate and chlorine can and will slow or stop a ferment altogether. So some people will say, no, it doesn't, but in my experience, yes, it does. And it might depend on how much chlorine your city uses in the water. They're all supposed to follow a certain standard or certain guideline, but each state can have different guidelines too. So I'm just gonna, this is my vinegar stirring, it's a chopstick. I use it for stirring vinegar all the time. So I'm just gonna stir that real good. And what's gonna happen, like I said, is that rhubarb is gonna start soaking up that water. And I might go ahead and put just a, well, no, I'm not going to put any more in there because when it starts to bubble, it pushes whatever is in here, your fruit, your herbs, your vegetable, it starts pushing it up and then you can have overflow. You might want to set this in a bowl or a cake pan. Like I set my wines when they first start fermenting, I put them in a cake pan just in case. But this is also why it's important to stir your vinegar every day. As, while it's bubbling like that. Once it stops pushing the fruit, herbs, and whatever up, uh, you won't have to do that. But stirring it does a few different things. It keeps it aerated because oxygen is important in the making of your vinegar. So the yeast in the vinegar is going to convert the sugars into alcohol, and then the oxygen converts the alcohol into vinegar. So that's how that works. So by stirring it, every day and depending on your climate if you're in a hotter place and it, it might get more active for you and more quickly you might need to stir it two or three times a day i've had some vinegars i've had to do that with and that way it also means you don't have to use weights which i think is best to not use weights because it's it's hard to find a good effect of a weight weight to hold everything down and even if you do what's happening with that weight is it's you're not going to get as much oxygen exposure in there it's going to cause the vinegar to take much longer to ferment so your typical fermenting time is going to be about 30 days this can be more or less remember this is a living thing and also is going to depend on the amount of sugar your uh the warmth of your 
wherever you've got it fermenting, all these things are going to play a factor in how long it takes. So you just got to taste it every so often and smell it. You can also get pH strips, which if you get some pH strips, what you want to do, because the uh, one thing somebody informed me of, and I didn't even think of this, is the chemicals on the pH strips. When I, when I was first doing videos showing the pH strips, could have toxins in them. So it's best if you're going to use a pH strip to test the acidity, make sure you put the vinegar in a small, just a small amount, just enough where you can swish the pH strip around in there, in, you know, like a little shot glass or something, and then you're gonna toss that. Because uh, you don't want those toxins in your vinegar, especially if you're going to use it for an edible purpose. Now, I wouldn't recommend even testing it until you know you've got a good strong vinegar flavor. Then go ahead and test it. Uh, you should be able to tell by the scent and if it's completely stopped bubbling. But just because it's completely stopped bubbling does not mean that it's finished. Usually about the two week mark, it slows down considerably or even comes to a stop in the bubbling. And then the last two weeks are when it's really turn it was when it's taken the last of that alcohol in there and turning it into vinegar. Now, because we need that oxygen exposure, you need to cover this with something that's breathable. I always use recycled. I have I have all kinds of scrap fabric, and I have some I keep set aside specifically for making vinegar. And I just put a rubber band up over it. Now, if you don't have scrap fabrics, you can use old t-shirts that you're not you're gonna cut up and turn into rags anyway. Anything that's cotton and breathable, not unnatural fabrics like microfiber. It, or you can also use a paper towel, but those those will come apart a lot quicker. A lot of people will like to use a coffee filter. The thing I like about cloth is that you can just keep washing it and reusing it instead of going through uh paper more paper products but you got to use what you have on hand as long as it's natural and as long as it's breathable and will allow both the gases to escape and the oxygen to get in unlike when you're wine making you want the gases to escape so your jugs don't explode but you also do not want oxygen to get into your wine or it will turn it to vinegar so unless you're trying to make vinegar you got to use an airlock Again, in about 30 days, that should be ready. I will go ahead and put a few pictures here so you can see what it looks like. I'm gonna edit this video and get it up before this is finished because, you know, it's a whole month out, but I'm gonna wait long enough to at least get photos of how this will look since the, this rhubarb is fully dehydrated. I wanna show you what it's gonna look like once it's sat in here for a few days and had a chance to soak up that water and rehydrate. And yes, you can also take things like your rhubarb and usually your whatever you've used in your vinegar is not going to have any flavor of that item left because that's all gone into the vinegar itself. But you can eat them if you want. They're just going to taste like vinegar and they're they might not taste good. But if you have chickens and maybe some other farm animals, you can try feeding them to them. My chickens usually love any uh, vinegar scraps that I throw out to them like apple you know especially if it's anything fruit related and they'll just eat them right up and it's very healthy for them so that's what you can do with those when they're all done so there you have it it's as simple as that now I do have a whole list of vinegar videos I have other FAQ videos that are just about vinegar making so I'll be putting the vinegar making playlist down below just keep in mind some of the older videos I did things differently when I first started my channel than I do now. Along the way, I just always find better or easier or both ways to do things and then I update it along the way. But if you have any questions that you can't find in my FAQ playlist or in the vinegar making playlist, just go ahead and ask them down below. And maybe if I do have that video and you didn't find it, I'll link, give it to you in a link or I'll, it will let me know I need to make another FAQ video. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.